Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Tony, what's up, buddy? Oh, now just a friend. Oh, sorry, my best friend. My best friend, Tony. Oh man, now my feelings are hurt. <laughs> Have we ever done it the same every ever? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. No. Um, hey, well, at least at least one of us haven't. <laughs> what fair? All right, fair, fair enough. Um, but you know, it's a you know, tune in next week and see what we're gonna say. <laughs> so dumb. What's up, brother? <laughs> what's up, man? Hey, um, I don't. I, I I'm ex. I'm. This is a wrong word. I'm excited about this month. So um, what we're doing this month in the month, of, the great month of October is that we're coining it as Hairstylist Inner Health Month. And what we want to do is we want to put out a lot of uh, content on um, this month, uh, every Monday on your day off. Um, we want to put out a lot of uh, content this month just to talk about like inner health and, and, and uh, for the industry. I mean, I don't know. I, I, and you know to to be transparent and all that we um we're we're coining it inner health because to me inner health feels more proactive in the conversation absolutely and you know it's i mean everything gets labeled or stereotyped and you know what i mean and we don't want to kind of fall into that category cuz cuz that's not what it is you know what i mean it is let's let's focus on inner health and inner well-being and you know we all go through seasons oh Ooh, I like that, Tony. You're right. We all go through seasons. Um, yeah, every single one of them. I was just looking this morning for a tattoo idea. Um, and my tattoo idea is I think I'm gonna get a tattoo like on my thumb or something. Um, and it all just gonna say is this too shall pass. But I'll try to find like the Latin word for that. This too shall pass pass, you know, because like you're talking about seasons, like like whether you're in a really great season, this too shall pass. Yeah. Right. Whether you're in a really like negative season, this too shall pass. Right. Or, or even if you're in a neutral season, this too shall pass. And you call me friend again, you <laughs> shall pass too. Fair enough, best friend. <laughs> like a friend, like gets boosted up after a death threat. Right. <laughs> what kind of relationship uh, is this? That's crazy, man. I feel like a battered wife here. Right. <laughs> That's so messed up. I feel like a forgotten husband. <laughs> you are a forgotten husband. Uh, hey, um, so uh, all jokes aside, um, we're bringing in one of our dear, dear friends. Um, someone that uh, actually like. It's one of the, uh, for me, it's one of the like coolest things about starting the podcast is that we, uh, we now have like a real legitimate friendship with, with someone who I've um, idolized or certainly admired at the very, very least admired um, for many, many years. So not now to, you know, kind of be in like this space and go like, oh, this dude's my friend. Like we talk a lot on the phone just to talk or just to chat um, about the industry and other things. So um, I'm really, really excited um, to bring on um, our dear friend, Michael Cole today. Um, we did a podcast with him back I think it was 2018. Yeah, it was October 2018, and when we kicked off Sober October, if I'm not mistaken, it was kind of the first time he had ever talked about his sobriety in a public forum. I know that he had done it with friends and stuff, um, but in a public forum is the first time that he kind of um he he ever talked about it. And you know, I was just honored that he picked our space to do that. Um, so today we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna continue that conversation. You know, here we are five years later. We're gonna continue the conversation, but as opposed to like focusing so much on like you know Michael's addictions and Michael getting sober, we're gonna talk a lot more about how he's maintained his sobriety and, 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 and the importance of that and also how that affects his inner health. And then hopefully you guys can take something away from it um, to, uh, to hopefully there's some tools in there um, for your own inner health or certainly for your own uh, inner conversations. Yeah. I think there's going to be just, just a bunch of learns, just, you don't even have to be addicted to, to alcohol or drugs or anything, you know what I mean? Anything that you're struggling with, uh, I, I have a feeling that uh, some of these things that you'll be able to apply to your life and uh, um, and just, you know, be able to stay strong, whatever you're trying to get through. I, I, that, that's a very, very good point that, you know, it's not just about the addiction necessarily or, yeah. or staying for there, but it's just, you know, I think I think I think where we're going to end up at the end of this. And I hope I'm wrong because I hope we get so much further. But, you know, is that is that sobriety is mental health. 
right? Mm -hmm. And 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 to 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 or inner health. Let me, let me go back to the uh, to the branding. It's inner health. So you know. Um. Anyways, instead of us jabbering on, let's bring on the guest of honor, <laughs> Mr. Michael Cole. Welcome back to your day off. And what is this like our tenth time? Oh man, I don't know, but I always look forward to it. I love geeking out with you two. I just uh, there. I always have the conversation after the conversation with myself, of course, and I go, "What just happened there? We just hit these streams of consciousness that are just real surprising." So I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, the universe has in store for us today. Hey, we just appreciate you know when five years ago when we were just two knuckleheads trying to start a podcast that you uh we're open enough and embraced us in into your community and we just you know want to just say thank you and and we love you to death brother oh well you you've been paying me back ever <laughs> since <laughs> because, well it's just it's been glorious to stand and watch your your you know your brand spreading uh i knew you when it was a glimmer in your eye and now uh being in your presence uh synergizes whatever brand i have left in my ride so thanks for uh continuing to hang out with me appreciate it well thank you michael and and you know even you know let's go back to 2018 real quick and and, and again if you haven't heard that podcast i highly recommend it um it was sober october 2018 it was powerful it was a powerful powerful thing um we uh we, we definitely shared some tears and we shared some hugs and um and you know, uh, we even get, we even had a little moment there where the conversation got a little heated, but I but 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 only with love, right? Yeah. So um, I, I I I enjoyed that in the sense that like we could kind of break bread like that as well. But um, so you know, Michael, again, you kind of talked about your story about about you know your addiction issues and when you got sober and how you got sober. But but to me, that's not the hardest part. The hard the hardest part is not getting sober. The hardest part is maintaining sobriety and what that means. So, I mean, that's kind of where I see the conversation going today. But, um, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll throw the mic to you because you're the man that says so much with so little words. Mm. Well, thank you. The, the, you know, this conversation is, it's not secret. At least it, it isn't anymore. But it's always, always, always sacred. And be, because I, I continue to watch what the conversation has done to me and watch uh, what the conversation does to people that are in the conversation. So let's let's get at it. You you said something about, you know, in, in, in my community, it would be, you know, uh, the idea is to stop whatever the, we're stopping. You know, we're, we're, we're engaged in, you know, self-limiting, self-defeating, uh, self-destructive, whether you want to call it a way of being behavior and it's uh it's blowing up our life so to to to, to stop it uh, you know putting the plug in the jug uh, putting put you know like getting that part on hold but then there is okay i stopped and then there's let's stay stopped and then once we can stay stopped let's 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 learn how to live stopped uh and that to me is where the conversation gets rich and again this you said it earlier the, the conversation transcends uh a overuse abuse use of alcohol and drugs you you can apply this to anything uh and, and when you really look at the application of it today i think that at last count there was just a side of 200 communities that this these principles or whatever you want to call them are being used where people just kind of show up and uh, I, I'm struggling with this aspect of my life. Some people call it emotions. I, it can, can, <laughs> my emotions are managing me. I'm not managing them in my life. Is you know, there's a lot of drama in it. At any rate, I remember the value proposition that was dropped on me early on, and I said, okay, so I want to stop. I want to stay stopped, and I want to live. I want to learn how to live stop. And the value proposition was, Michael, if you come in and you uh, work, work, uh, whether we call them steps, whether we call them principles, which basically I really, I, I like the word principles more than steps because it's universal. Uh, if, you, if you work the principles of the community, 
and allow those principles to work in you. If what happened to us happened to you, your life will get exponentially better than the, however good your life was before you know you blew up your life or before that part of your life went away. And that was so profound, I said, you got to say that one to me again, because that's a value proposition. That's an elevator pitch, <laughs> if I've ever heard one. Work the principles, let the principles work you. Um, and if what happens to others happens to you, your life will not just get better. It's exponential. And the other word that we use for that is transform. Your life, you, your life will get transformed. Now, and then the the the, the whole truth was, if that happens to you, you will stay. You, you, you will stay because you'll go, ooh, it, it, it's not you live happily ever after. The, 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 your life gets exponentially better is as much present tense as past tense. And you, you look forward, you know, some of my teachers would say, because I, I go, gee, you've been, you've been in the conversation for 50, 60 years. What's next? And the answer is always the same. Uh, until it's my turn to die, I'm going to see how far this will take me. It's never about uh, how far I how far I can get, because getting implies that I've got something to do with it. But how far this thing is going to take me, I look forward to seeing that. Now, I was also warned, if that doesn't happen to you, and there are many people it doesn't happen to, you will not stay. You, you will go back to whatever it was you were doing, being, and using before you got here, because that's the only way we know how to live. Well, if I, I mean, remember it, correctly it, from our first conversation, Michael, like you were like, you were in the stay for 12 years and then you fell off or something like that. Yeah, I, well, I was in it for just about four years. Okay. And then uh, be, because I moved too far away from the conversation. So you, you need to be in, there's a community of people. You know, I mean, there's our world. We go to work and there's a whole bunch of people in our world. Most of them are in the worldly conversation. But there's this conversation and uh, there are communities, I call, you know, pockets of light. And I go there frequently to so that I can uh, remember longer before I forget. And when I do forget to remember sooner than I would otherwise. Uh, and that's what happened to me. I got too far away from the conversation and I forgot. And then before you know it, um, you know, I was back in, I was back to uh, using the, my ways of being that I was using before because it was the only way I knew how. And then sooner or later, I didn't come back. I, I was brought back. You know, there's natural consequences that come out of our self-defeating way staying unchecked. And those consequences over time are called crisis. You know, my, my, my pants are on fire. My life's on fire. My hair's on fire. I'm saying help. I'll do anything, not not to have a better life, but to just, you know, survive and sustain. And of course, that that happens. And then you go, and oh, by the way, these same principles will help you more than sustain. They will, uh, today in my business life, I would say, number one, it is my secret sauce. End of story. It's my secret. People go, how can, how do you keep doing it? You know, how do you, whatever you want to call it. reinventing, rebranding, reimaging, you know, finding the next right answer, jumping the next curve. They'll go, how, how do you, how, like, what do you, are, are you, are you plugged into Google? You plugged into, you know, open AI, like what? WTF. And it's like, well, no, I, I'm just, there's a set of principles that I practice, the community that I belong to. And um, whatever it is you see coming from me, you need to know it's coming through me. You 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 just don't happen to be in here <laughs> with me, but it's coming through. So I want to stay in that flow, man. I love that, man. You know, how how has so? I, and I don't know how to phrase the conversation. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm, I'm looking for a little bit of support here, Michael. But the principles that you learned within your 
recovery or, you know, in getting sober, like how have those transcended into, you know, not just directly related to, to um, alcohol or to, or to addiction, let me back up to addiction, but how have those like for like daily, daily, yeah. you know, inner health kind of stuff, like how have you used them or what principles have, and I want you to be specific about. Oh yeah. I, okay. Good. <laughs> I, I, I'm loving this because Really, now that I'm kind of post everything, post L'Oreal, post Summit, and I'm in the, you know, the, the, the last run, and I can talk, I, I can now talk about what I want to talk about and not have to be concerned about what about these people that are giving me money. <laughs> so I can, so I am having this conversation, but I can't bring a lot, a lot of the conversation as it is into business with me because it, it's unsettling. People aren't ready. It, it creeps people out. So I take principles like one of the principles that um, are inside of any recovery model. And a principle, by the way, is it's a it's a truth that is self-evident. So there's no mystery in a, in a principle. So if a principle really is a principle and you begin teaching, talking about it, and raising awareness in somebody else about this principle, somewhere in that conversation, their aha is a BFO, a blinding flash of the obvious. They're going, oh my God, that's so true. <laughs> you know, I never heard it put in that context. I never heard the word, but that is so true. And that's where you know, I don't have to pitch you on this. Now, it's just, you. we need to get more intentional and more conscious about how we practice the principle. But as we do this, we go, gee, any traction I was getting on this before, it just like, it just blows up. So one of the one of them is, and I'm actually doing a, 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 a uh, I now do books on real on my Instagram page. So I'm doing this little mini book or books on carousels called uh, the book of acceptance. So acceptance is a principle um, and I'm defining it in real, real, real simple language. One is, first of all, acceptance is for me and this is all about my, my own experience. So yeah, I'm sure you could get experts on acceptance and saying, no, he's, he's full of it. He's off target there, but I'm just bringing my, I, you know, I'm not a certified doctorate in acceptance, but after a course, I've been in recovery now 25 years. So I'm saying that this is, I've been practicing this idea for 25 years. Here's what I bring to the table. One, it's an attitude. It's an attitude. It's a freaking mindset. So, and, and, it's, and it's unlike, let's call it your common mindset. And the attitude, basically what it says is, when there are situ any situation in my life, I'm gonna look at that situation first and foremost from an attitude of non-judgment. So I wouldn't look at uh, a, a situation and call it, ah, oh, this is really shitty. This is, this is making me crazy and it's awful and it's terrible and it's, it's unfortunate. And, I, and not that you can't find a whole bunch of other people that'll come and co-sign that. I'm just saying, well, what is the situation then, damn it? This situation is what this situation is. Now that's foreign to a lot of people because we're used to just either or. This is either great, I love it, it's cool, it's awesome, or this sucks. And I'm saying if you're gonna if you're gonna put on acceptance as an attitude as a pair of glasses, I'm gonna go into this situation, and when somebody says, "Well, wh what is this?" Well, it is what it is. So is that'd this, be number one. Is this the Let same just, principle of? The, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, all right, so once I'm there, it's like, okay, then what? Well, now the, the attitude of non-judgment is supported by what's my intention. And my intention is whatever this situation is, I'm going to bring, my, my motive is, I'm going to see if I can make the best of it. I, I don't need to even have that figured out. But I, I could ask the I could ask the question. What do I need to do to make the best of this situation? Well, until what? Until it changes, because it'll change. It's got to change. Well, well how do you know that? Ahead. What are you psychic? Is because no, it's it's evolution. This is kind of sort of how the universe is set up. 
everything is trans uh, transient. So, and so now if that's what it, and, and I wanna do all that it, without complaint. And if I stay a non-judgment, I won't complain about it. Now I can talk about acceptance as a law that says what I can accept, well, let me start the other way. What I resist will persist because the opposite of acceptance is I'm resisting reality rather than accept. What I resist persists, doesn't get better. What I accept can be made better. And that's it. I mean, that's it. That 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 one principle would be at the top of my list. Um, and now I can pass the test. I can go. Wow, you just gave a great talk on acceptance. Yes, I did. Do, can you practice it as good as you can talk about it? <laughs> no, I'm I'm a, I'm a student, so I you know I don't bat a thousand at practicing acceptance. I get amnesia all the time. But you come to conversations, you go, you hang out with people that have adopted this. All of a sudden, you got a community of people that practice acceptance. Wow. Anyway, I'm done. I'm ranting now. No, yeah, that was, that was good. That was good. It, when he was talking, when he, when when you first started talking about it, Michael, it reminded me of the uh, the old Chinese proverb. I think I don't know if it's a proverb, but it's a it's a parable about um about we'll see, you know about the we'll see, we'll see. you know. So the 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 Chinese farmer who's uh, who's who's uh, they they all the horses ran away and they uh, all of his neighbors came and go I'm so sorry your horses and he goes we'll see and then the next day the horses came back but now the now the tribe is or the 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 herd is twice as big you know when there's value and then you know the next day as his son is um you know wrangling the the horses he breaks his leg and the neighbors go oh, I'm so sorry and he goes we'll see you know and then the next day you know the Chinese army came and took all the all, all the all the worthy boys and he got left for all them to get murdered and, and, you know, for all them to die in war and battle. Anyways, it goes on and on and on. Yeah. The, the, the proverb is we'll see, you know, we'll see, we'll see if this is a good thing or if this is a bad thing, but we can't predict the future to know what it is. So we just accept it for what it is. What did you say 10 minutes ago? Was it this two show pass? Didn't show you pass. say that? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and the other, the other twin to that is um, stay tuned. More will be revealed. <laughs> That's right. You know, it, it's so, but we, it's so easy to forget this. And I don't know about you, but I wasn't brought up this way. I, I was brought up to, you know, if it's going to be, it's up to me. And, you know, you just white knuckle and you go, and it worked for a while. And then, you know, there's some trade-offs at any rate. Do, do you, when you, through this inner health and, and, and recovery and, and staying uh, recovered, do you, do you use inspiration such as like, you know, I'm going to have a better marriage. I'm going to have a better work life. Or is it more like, you know, I'm going to have a better me. What do you, yeah. what do you use when you do, when you go through these things? Well, what comes up for me, Tony, when I hear your question is yes. And, you know, yes to, to both that I'm going to set an intention to have a, a better, you know, dot, 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 fill in the blank, better income, better marriage, better, better, better. Okay, great. So that's the intention. What's your action plan? I'm going to go to work. I'm going to use these principles to work on myself rather than, you know, like in a marriage. I, I, I'm going to use it to work on myself rather than to be so concerned about how can I help my wife work these principles? How can I, you know, change her? And I've done both sides and I'm here to report I, I, my track record is better when the, the the question the pose on how can i use these principles to change me because there's something that'll happen inside of that my relationship with whoever and they they either change or we're both lifted out of that situation and life has something else in mind for us so and again stay tuned more will be revealed michael this is so i, I don't Here's my concern, especially what you're seeing a lot on social media right now, and it might just be what I'm absorbing, and, and I'll give that. So if I'm missing something, I, I, you know, I, I give that I'm missing something. But so much of the mental health conversation on social media, certainly within the industry, is always how others affect us. Right. It's always like, oh, I've got to set boundaries to my clients for this or, oh, I've got to set boundaries to my, my coworkers of this or my coworkers this. That's why I'm in this position or my boss is this and that's mm. why I'm in this position or that. And, and, and to me, it's to me, when I read it, 
first off, I read it with empathy because I, because I also figured I'm, I'm also feeling, and this might be a little bit arrogant, but like, have you put the work forward to yourself? Because here's what I know. I know that my life is much better when I'm not concerned about such things. You know, I know that my life is is a lot better when, when, when I can control my reactions to, to how other people are, how other people um, are treating me. And I put that in quotation. I do, I do the Michael quotation mark, but how people are treating me that, that my life is much better when I can, you know, control my own reactions and my own investment um, in, 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 in that. You're driving your own bus. You're not letting everybody else drive your bus. Exactly. And I'm not making excuses why no one's getting on my bus. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And uh, what came up uh, <clears throat> as I was um, listening to your, your, your kind of you setting the preface there, um, uh, Glory, was that um, I, I, I would, my, you know, one of the things we learn is not only a consciousness, but a language that supports it. I, I come back to my own readiness. So if you, you want me to do something, to accommodate you and whatever that is, I, I my my style is to say I I I hear what you're saying. I have an appreciation for what you're saying. I'm just I'm not in a place that I of readiness that I can support that. I, I don't want to overcommit and under deliver on that. So right now I I'm not I, I just I don't have the readiness. Or I might even say willingness. Mm. Uh, readiness and willingness are two they're, they're related but i i just I, I just lack the willingness and i love you too much to not tell you that now you might have a problem i don't know whatever that reaction is and i i'm i'm will uh, my heart will go out to you that you're having the experience you're having because of what i said was um is not a good experience i can see that you're disturbed by it and so my heart goes out to you but I'm real clear about what I'm ready to do and not ready to do or willing to do and not willing. And I, I don't need to uh, work hard at explaining why before you get it. It's not, it's not for me that you understand it. I can explain it to you, but I, I've given up on trying to understand it for you. That's where you come in. This kind of reminds me of an early conversation that I had with Michael when he was in a clamshell. Um, and for you young people, clamshell is, is 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 a cassette thing that Michael used to that Michael used to sell about you know like you know how to <laughs> how to be a Forbes Fortune 500 one. Then like you know Michael had a bunch of uh, cassette tapes in that thing. Cassette tapes are these little tapes that you put. Now never mind it. We'll get into oh, that. Oh wow! Yeah. Later. Okay. But you know like like Michael had so many like so much wisdom in that. But you know if I wasn't ready to hear the wisdom, you know um, then then then. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a yes. 500 bazillionaire, you know, yeah. it's just, it's not, how many, like how many times, like, I can even remember specifically when I first got in the industry and someone saying like, like, enjoy this while you're young, because this is a young man's profession, you know, and, and like, mm. ah, whatever. But now, you know, now as a man in my mid fifties and my body's breaking down while I'm doing hair, mm. I, I heed those words a lot easier <laughs> now than I did when I was 22. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we what, the things we used to kind of poke fun of now we we're, we're talking about with compassion and a heads up that we're you, we're world class athletes and our body can perform at a certain level, a very high level for a while. Is it a decade? Is it two decades? Is it three? But at some point, um, you know, the law of uh, physics takes over, and uh, we so you know make your be mindful. At any rate, that's a different conversation. A whole other conversation, exactly. Sorry if I sidebar, but you know that's what. No that's worries. Kind of, that that that's kind of what I do. Um, yeah, for like like for my to go back and about relationships, like I know like with my wife and I, and, and and this for for our both of our inner health and 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 the health of our marriage, we we will like, you know, she'll say black, I'll say white. But whatever, if it's more important to her than it is to me, then I'll go with that and vice versa. If it's more important to me than it is to her, she'll, she'll take a seat back, you know, step back and then allow, you know, whether, whether I want to do this or do that or say this or say that we make sure that, you know what I mean? If it's, if it, 
just for the better of the relationship, you know what I mean? Because well, it, at, at the end of the day, it's not about your point. It's not about her point, but it's about the relationship's point. Exactly. You know, and what's the big picture here? You know, like, like, are you going to blow up your relationship? But, you know, that's such a learned behavior. And I certainly applaud you and, and Brandy, because like, that's such a learned behavior in that, like, what's the most important thing here? You know, I think you get to, you get to a certain time in your relationship to where you realize that I, I kind of remember when it happened to me like what's more important here is my point more important here or is the long-term health of our relationship the most important thing here mm. yeah i i put uh, you know i used one of the questions that i usually reflect is uh, how important is this yeah for me and and depending on who i'm with and how much skin we both have in the game you know you start talking about a marriage and um yeah i it, it helps to humble me but it it goes back to the conversation a few minutes ago I, I, acceptance the other active ingredient in acceptance is non-judgment so when i'm able to look at a situation it's not good it's not bad it is what it is what do they call that that's non-judgment uh and i can have non-judgment uh, with anyone myself and you know the people places and things is what put together a situation and I can approach it. Uh, I can listen from that standpoint of non-judgment and probably I'm going to have an experience of that conversation that I won't have if uh, I'm, I'm in any kind of sense of judgment. And one of the experiences we have when we're in that place of non-judgment is we have insights. All of a sudden we have a new thought about maybe a, a not so new situation and you you always know when you do it because in that moment you get a hit it's like a something happened you go what happened i just saw something that i hadn't seen before i just uh the, i saw something to consider that i hadn't considered and we don't know what that is but those are the fruits of when you approach situations with acceptance and non-judgment and you know, we're doing a, we're we're doing more listening, but the listening is from non-judgment. I've seen people listen all day long because they were told, you know, you got to be a better listener. <laughs> but if I've got a whole bunch of stuff going on in my head, uh, my intentions are good, but it's 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 not going. I'm probably not going to have the experiences that I need to have when I'm listening in order to help to move the ball forward. I love that. And uh, I, I just want to reiterate to anyone that's listening that it sounds like we have the answers here, but uh, Michael brought it up earlier. And I certainly talk mm -hmm. about this as openly as that, that I possibly can is that is that as what we're talking about right now is the highlight reel of our life. And what I mean by that is that I, with all the principles that I try to live by, I only get it right 50 percent of the time. You know, for the other 50% of the time, there's something else in the way for ego or almost 99% of the time, it's ego that gets in the way uh, uh, of living to, uh, into my best, into my best principles. Um, You know, but, but, but what it does and what it's really good about is once you have the principles is that it gives you a foundation to go back to. And it also gives you the principle to, and I know you said non-judgment, but I also think it's important to like, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that to Tony because that just wasn't, it doesn't get us down. the. It doesn't get us down the street. I shouldn't have said that to my wife because that doesn't get us down the, down the road in our relationship, right. or whatever. Um, you know, one of the principles that I do live by try to again, batting 500 or less, more or less um, is, uh, is, is I try to be in control of my reactions and, and um, I try to be non-reactive to everything because to that, to what you were saying earlier, like I can't observe while I'm reacting. You know, mm -hmm. and in a conversation that I had with myself earlier in, in life was that, have I ever been reactive to a situation and gotten a positive result? And the answer is, I am batting a thousand there. The answer is always no. I've never been reactive to a situation and gotten a positive result. So then I had to ask myself the second follow-up question, which is, why are you doing this if it's not serving you? Yes. Why are you being reactive if it's, if it's not serving you? Um, and the more and more that I've done this, or I've kept this principle, you know, the less reactive that I am, just naturally, the less reactive that I am. But that doesn't mean that I don't get fired up and stuff. But what it does is when I do get fired up, I go, oh, this is, this fired up means reaction. And like reaction isn't something that I'm going to stand for. So it, it allows me to, just to take that beat to kind of reassess where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. It's, I lo I'm loving the conversation that uh, there's so much that you said. I, wanna, I just want to unpack a couple of parts of it. One is 
gee, why is it that we can only bat whatever you want to call the percentages? I don't know about you, but those times where I struck out, even though my intention was to stay in the game, it's my stuff got hooked. I got hooked. I'm human. So, you know, and these days I'm calling that stuff my baggage, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and and uh, it's interesting. You got me it kind of, I now in my, my day job and my philanthropic work slash a little bit of things going on in beauty schools. I'm, I'm doing more teaching to uh, school educators and students. And we're talking, we don't call this conversation what we're calling it here. In school, we would call it TLC. And TLC is transformational life coaching. So anytime I'm as a teacher engaging you, a student in the conversation, I'm really coaching you, not so much just about your business, but life. And through these principles, if you practice them, you know, your life gets better. And so one of the terms that we use is our baggage. What's our baggage? And, and my C. Johnny Run definition, again, this is all in my experience in life, is baggage is the stuff that um, my past has me believing I am. So we're in this life journey and we go through life and uh, we get, life happens and we get messages, ideas about uh, life that aren't necessarily either true or they're kind of distorted. And my baggage is I, I bought, I signed on to that and now that's in my way. So my baggage is what, what past life has me believe in either I am, I'm about, life's about, and this conversation here is unloading and unpacking, unpacking and unloading the baggage. Not, not that I can find new clothes, because what the baggage is covering up is what's always in us. I mean, that's what's so compelling about recovery. One of my, my first week in recovery, there was, a, there was a, a phrase called, some of our members have tapped the unsuspected inner resource. So, and I'm going to say it again. Our members have tapped. They've woken up to the unsuspected inner resource. You call this, uh, what did you call the, the conversation? Inner, inner health. That there's something in me, inner health, that, that health is innate. It, it's who I am. I came into the world with it. These days I'm calling it the diamond. But my baggage disguises it. It covers it up. So as I unload it, I don't have to, okay, out with the dirty clothes, in with the clean, or out with the... It's like, no, no. You'll... What's always been in there, all of a sudden, you see it. You discover it. And, and now life is about how do I learn to use that to navigate life? And then uh, how can I pay forward? to others what somebody else taught me to do about this because that's the one, the last tenant in recovery is pay it forward like if you were served and you woke up and your life got better pay it forward somebody had to pay it forward to you because if they weren't you wouldn't be here you'd be st you'd still be face down in the mud with arrows in your back so anyway i'm going to move forward and you said you know uh, it's been 25 years for you. Um, I know it's been, uh, let's see, 23 years for me, uh, since I quit smoking, but if I see someone smoking or if I smell it, my addiction, my urge is very strong still after 23 years, uh, it's easy for me to resist it, but I still crave it after 25 years. Are you? Do you still use these principles every day to make sure you stay in recovery or, or is there times where it's stronger than other times? Yeah, yeah I, I would say a lot of the answers is yes and. So from a primal level, I use these principles to stay stopped, to stay, you know, to not relapse. Uh, but then I, while I include that intention, I, there's other, there's other intentions I have for these same principles. And that's the conversation that we've been having. It's interesting that you, you know, being around people that smoke or whatever, I would say to you being around people 
that use, it's not difficult for me, but I see the implications, or at least I, you know, I, I've been in business long enough. If I'm not part, there, there, there are communities that, you know, work hard, play hard. And this is not a judgment of those communities. There are people that are very, that operate at a very high level of functioning that are of the work hard, play hard school of thought um, that didn't work for me. And, um, but you know, birds of the same feather flock together. And that, that's not my flock. And some, there's been times in my 25 year history that I, I know that because I'm gonna leave the party now or you know, whatever that is, that um, there'll be some trade-offs there. Um, you know, and there are groups of people that I'm in, I, I would say uh, the, the elephants in the room but no one's talking about it. Or the elephants in the room, there's people that are stepping in, you know, elephant shit, but nobody wants to talk about because it, that it's too big of a conversation. So you just leave it alone. Love that. I want to um, back up a little bit. I want to go back to the baggage thing. Cause, um, and you know, I'm, I'm using this podcast as therapy, I think a little bit, but, but that's okay. That's what we do. Um, but- <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Amen. So, um, you know, and literally like the, over the last few months, you know, the conversation, the, the, the strong conversations that I've been having with myself is about rewriting my story, you know, cause, cause we, because I've written my story about what my childhood was like, what my adolescence was like, what my whatever was like. And that, and, and I lived in that story for a really, really long time. And every time I told that story, it reinforced that story, which is such a Mm. that we kind of do you know but but kind of moving forward like how can i rewrite my story and not that not that the, that not that my story wasn't didn't happen but the way that i re, once again back to reaction but the way that i've reacted to my story how can i rewrite my reaction to that story and just write and, and to be able to rewrite what what my future mm. looks like or or what what or was that here, here, here here's where i'm stuck with now and, and i'm hoping at some point i can evolve past this is that i don't know how much of my story is true like I've, I've written it and I've talked about it so much and my emotional, like my emotional connection to those stories. And I've told it so much that, that I don't know necessarily where the truth and I, and, and by the way, I don't know if there's truth in anything. Like, I don't know if, if my story is true. I, here, here's a story and um that, that I'm trying to relate with, but I remember when we first started, the, it might've been when we had you on Michael, but I remember Tony's brother talking, David talking to you and saying like, that's funny because my childhood, I remember differently. Didn't he have that conversation mm -hmm. with you? Which is interesting. And not that either one of them are, are lying or not that either one of them aren't telling their truth, but we mm -hmm. don't really know what the truth is. So anyways, using that as the example, like I don't necessarily know what my truth is because I've told my mm -hmm. story so often, like where, where is the truth, you know? And, and yeah. does this truth serve me or not serve me. And if it's not serving me, then what story can I, what story can I write moving forward that does serve me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, wow. It's a, it's a provocative it's a deep profound question i'm i'm going to bring to the table what i bring to the table in my experience with it one uh my answer to part of that is what is true what is what is the true story and i i'm going to suggest in the tenets of the models now that i embraced my story my story was written for me before i began when i was brought in i mean if i really buy into sign on to the idea that uh, inner health, as we're call calling this, and which, by the way, I think is the highest practice of self-care. I just wanted to get that in so I wouldn't forget. Like when that, I, I got so lit up when you talked about inner health. Inner health, that there was an award for the highest practice of self-care. Inner health, or whatever you want to call that, wins it hands down in my, in my book. Anyway, getting back to the truth, I am the diamond, uh, or I am innate health. It, it's, it's, and you know, you, there's books of ancient writings that, that point to that. We're, we're, we're made in the likeliness and the image of uh, the universe, if you will, life. So that we come in there, and then through that, we, things get covered up. And you can call that whatever you wanna call it. I'm, I'm just gonna call it uh, baggage because it's a word that's used a lot. 
they brought a lot of baggage <laughs> to, to someone, right? And the baggage is the stuff that um, uh, I was led to believe based on the the ride um, that really, it, it, if it's if it's true, it's not the whole truth. And there's one thing better than the truth, and of course that's the whole truth. And that that while that piece of baggage served me. It, it helped me to survive. There was a time in my life it, it got me through that. Now, it, 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 that was then, this is now. And um, it's now, it looks like it's holding me up. I need some help waking up to that. And then begin to uh, let go of, uh, give up, um, uh, uh, release my attachment, not be so identified with that. And what happens after that? I, I, I don't need to f find truth. I just remember again that, okay, uh, I'm looking forward to see, seeing how much of my inner health, what new forms that manifests in. And that process, by the way, in recovery is called surrender. So uh, li li living from a place of surrender. My confession to you, is uh, in business, I don't uh, like to use the word surrender. In spiritual communities, it's fine. But in business, surrender creeps people out. So I, I, you know, I basically say, uh, having less of my identity tied to ideas and having more of my identity tied to the truth, or at least what I believe to. What's the truth again? Oh, I'm the diamond. I'm the innate health. I'm the unsuspected inner resource. I'm made in the image and likeliness of life with a capital L. Um, and I need to be, I need to be reminded of that constantly. Uh, it's interesting. One of the practices in recovery is some sort of quiet time, uh, uh, mindfulness, uh, 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 meditation, quiet time. And people say, how, how often do you pray? And I go, well, kind of, but not true. Well, how often do you do that? And I would say, no, they don't say how often. How do you do that? Like, how do you do, like, what is it? How do you do it? And I go, well, number, the first answer is constantly. <laughs> <laughs> constantly. Uh, you, you think that whatever it is we're doing is we're sitting in a chair and being quiet for 10 minutes. It's like, no, no, that's the on-ramp. <laughs> The, the real work happens when, you know, the bell goes off when it's time to go to work. Uh, wh whatever it was I was intending that just sitting down for a few minutes would get me to that place. N now I got to take that space with me and live life. So as you said a few minutes ago, I'm not so damn, what did you call it? At the mercy of my impulses. Like I'd be, I'm a little bit better at controlling the impulse and which by the way impulse is in recovery is the inner urge to act without conscious thought and i have a a, a shit ton of impulses in me and and by the way we call those uh when you have too many of them if you're not in you're not no longer impulsive you're compulsive <laughs> yes <laughs> so we can we can geek out on the language uh but at any rate uh surrender living from a place of surrender um oh and when sooner or later some of the impulse goes away i don't have to work as hard to not call you an asshole you know i might have to bite my tongue but as i as little by I still little struggle with that <laughs> <laughs> that's part of tony's practice <laughs> guilty as starts your honor i mean i you know i mean we're human so at any rate i'm done but but uh, but Michael, I mean, you 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 addressed half of it, but then the other half is to rewrite the story moving forward, and that might yeah. be the most important part of it. At least with me, like I knew that I knew that early on, I had to give up who I identified as, who I was. I was the fun party guy, you know. But that stopped serving me at some point, and then right. now, now, what's the story moving forward? And 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 what what practices are you using to? Mm -hmm. And maybe this is unfair to even ask you, but what practices are you using f to change your story? Yeah, I, I, I would say my, my story is changing, first and foremost. As I practice these principles, I'm observing. I'm actually watching my story change. 
being changed, rather, which is different than me rewriting the story. Now, I might say, wow, as I, as I have a surprising experience, all of a sudden, OMG, what the hell just happened there? Something just happened. Something just came through me. Something, there was a result that, and so I'll sit down and maybe reflect because it's all experience. I'd like to understand a little bit more about this very surprising new experience I had. I might even engage you in a conversation because you get the conversation. Maybe you have a little bit of, maybe you had that experience and together all of a sudden we're beginning to understand the experience we just had. Don't look now, but I now, I, what I call that the story. And it, it, it happened through conversation, it happened through reflection, it happened through pausing. And the big thing that it, it happened through practicing the principles in, when you say all of our affairs, into the affairs of life. Um, and we, we give ourselves the opportunity to pause frequently so that we can not only have experiences, but reflect on the experience that we had so that that experience becomes understanding. In recovery, we wouldn't call it understanding. We call it wisdom. Oh, I like that. I like you know, that. and then all of a sudden, the book of wisdom is, wow, is rewrote. Um, you know, I, you know, I was in there somewhere, but it, there was much about applying principles that got the story done rather than me. It goes back to, I'm going to see how far this practice will take me, which is different. I used to say, I'm going to see how far I can get on this ride. And it's like, well, okay. <laughs> Well, as you get older, you realize it's more of a journey than a destination because our destination is. is in the ground. So yeah. you know, what are we doing before we get before we get to our destination? It's much more important than any oh. kind of destination, right? So and, and you guys, this is a deep conversation. I mean, I you know, trust me when I tell you when I leave you two and you know, when I I won't go back you you I don't engage your typical person in this conversation because it's there's a depth in it. And it's you know, it's not secret. Again, it's sacred. So um, I, I want to go back to a word that you used, and that was change. And and how I've had to, and, and I, I don't think I'm redefining change, but how I've had to look at change is different than I used to. Because, because change used to mean like, oh, there's new stuff happening. There's new stuff happening. There's new things. And sometimes we're resistant to the new things. And I argue that we're never resistant to the new things. What change really is, is the letting go of your belief systems. And if these belief systems are not serving you then why are we giving them so much damn power mm. over over enjoying the new things or, or not enjoying but experiencing the new things wow 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 yeah i i you said a whole bunch there um uh, change i'm going to call it uh transformation is a particular type of change so i'm going to say transformation is profoundly changing for the better and that old saying i don't know if you've heard it you can, you can change without transforming, but you can't transform without changing, you know? And that's uh, the, the other thing that you said, what did you say? I got to let go or give up some ideas, some beliefs and stuff. Systems. It's a belief system. Uh, it, it's letting go oh, of belief systems. Huge. It, it is the process of finding inner health, the pro or the process of finding the diamond is a process of subtraction not addition i need to subtract i need to let go i need to unpack unload and let go of this uh surrender this uh, give up this uh detach from this uh no longer identify with that those are all subtractions and so much of uh growth today professional development that's not necessarily so. You can you can grow w without subtraction. You can just what what's the next skill? What's the next technique? I'll add it and I'll be fine. But I think as we age, we get to a place where growth via addition just doesn't get it for us anymore. We have to say there are things there's baggage in me, and I've learned to overcompensate for it. 
I now want to get interested in having conversations to become aware of what is that baggage, unpack, unload, subtract. So what I see underneath that is what's always been there. It's, it's hidden. That's amazing. It, uh, the diamond in disguise. Yeah. That, when, as you're saying this, this is what I'm uh, <laughs> visualizing in my head. Imagine a house and the person's a hoarder, right? And all yes. that, all that stuff is is emotion, baggage, stuff that you're not willing to let go. So it's just going to continue to fill up space, and then all of a sudden now it's overflowing, and you can't have that clarity. You know, by letting it go, subtracting, releasing, living a little bit more of an emotional mi minimalist, you know, and freeing doesn't mean that you don't you don't have the love and all that. You just you have more room for it. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. And, and you said it earlier, um, Michael, about it's, you know, to the change it's evolution, right? So we've said it on the podcast a thousand times that Muhammad Ali has this quote. If you're the same person at 50, that you were at 20, you wasted 30 years of your life. We all evolve into in hoping that we evolve into a better me, a better father, a better husband, a better friend, friend, uh, Best you friend. know, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, it's, I mean, it's, yeah, it, it's all trying to like. I, I love the, the the analogy that you get is is to subtract. Hold on, I want to oh, first off. Oh, hold on, Michael. I gotta I gotta give my boy a hug because he called it emotional minimalist, and that is like a power. That's a like a power phrase. So thank you so much for giving me that because that I'm gonna use that as you know me and my mantras. That will be a mantra moving forward. Emotional minimalist. Is it defines everything we're talking about in two words. Yes, exactly. Uh, Tony is, is uh, uh, I would say he's a, a, a inner health Jedi with his metaphor of a house that we have. We all have this beautiful house. It's a mansion, but I love your term about we've been hoarding. It's, it's just filled with a whole bunch. I'm not even going to call it crap. It's stuff. It's tough, but as we as we begin to unpack and unload the stuff, taking stuff out of the house, we see something that's always been there. This is a beautiful, beautiful house. It's just over the years, um, it was left unchecked. We kept dropping things off because we needed places to put it. And now my wife, my wife was here. She would say she called it when it's uh, every week. It's time to clean the house. She says before the the house cleaning people come, I need to de shititize <laughs> right? To get, I got to get some of the stuff out of the way so that when they got, they don't, they're not tripping on, and then they, they take it from there, but you're exactly, and that is subtraction. Um, I, I think this is a great time to quote the great George Carlin. And he says, our stuff is stuff. Your stuff is shit. So everyone else's <laughs> stuff is shit. We got to deal yeah. with your shit. We got to put up with your shit because you're not taking care of your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jerry, I, I still, by the way, I still see his stuff on uh, Facebook, uh, on the, on the, you know, those, those little videos there. He's always doing his stand up stuff. I, I miss George Garland. Dude, it's amazing how like this guy's been dead for 15 years, but he's more relevant now than he ever has. Oh, has know? it been that long? Oh, my Lord. I actually don't know how many years it's been. I just threw out there 15. I don't know. It could be five or Probably. whatever. But whatever, it's still it's more relevant now than it's than than it's ever ever been. It's almost like he had a crystal ball of a, into his humor. But but uh, uh, well, I I hope inner health catches on. Yeah, you guys are what you're doing, and, and and what I love about this because I people that I work with are afraid that okay, you're a coach, you're a life coach, but we're not therapists. We're not there to. And so, how do we? What's the Rubicon that we never cross? And and for me, the answer is. I'm an educator. I'm an educator of inner health. I'm not a therapist. So anything I'm going to bring to the table is educate. And educate, if you really go on an archaeological word, the root word for educate is educe. And educe is a word that says to wake up. So in the process of educating anyone, we wake, we wake up, we wake ourselves, we wake other peoples up to what? That there in us is in inner inner health, and there's some things that are covering it. And to the degree that I wake up to that, you know, what I can see, I can stop. What I can't see stops me. So it all, you know, it, there's just a jillion different ways of being poetic 
in describing this, but it's the same thing. It's your, your, these principles will transform our life. And that's, what's so exciting about it. And you said wisdom earlier, and we truly yeah. appreciate your wisdom, bro. For sure. Mm. I, like I said, I, I, there isn't a conversation that I engaged both of you in where I left it and w didn't look forward to listening to it, uh, n n not to, you know, bathe in grandiosity, but um, I, there was a whole bunch of stuff that came to, I think, the three of us in the last hour or whatever that I, was surprising to me. And that's what we pointed to 15 minutes ago. You have these experiences. They're new. They're fresh. It's like, I didn't think that. Where the hell did that come from? And it came from being in that space where my our thinking was off, judgment was off, and that deeper place came through and took form. It's extraordinary. It's it's amazing. It's uh we we always appreciate our time with you, Michael. Um, and again, I'll take this moment. I'll probably do this every time I talk to you, but I just take this moment to thank you very much for the friendship. Again, the offline friendship. Um, I I, I I'm very grateful that we can have these conversations with a video camera running. But 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 mm -hmm. I'm mostly grateful for um for the uh, the phone conversations that we have, and 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 for you to all, that you've always made space and time for for me personally. Um, and I know you do the same for Tony. So I, I appreciate that. Um, uh, more than I can possibly express except to express it on a podcast that's heard by a few other people <laughs> D ditto and i really mean that i'm not being correct I, I, the feeling is mutual thank you that's awesome mr michael cole the great michael cole thank you very very much for joining us on your or the the wisdom of michael cole yes thank you thank you for the wisdom of michael cole mm. <laughs> for joining us on your deal <laughs>Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.